Greetings, friends, and welcome to Mark's Vinyl Collection, episode number 15. Um, today's episode is in response to a request I've had from a few subscribers who want me to start delving into my record collection and uh, showing some of my albums from certain bands. So, a one that's been brought up a few times by people is the band Gentle Giant. Now, I have a collection of Gentle Giant albums. Um, Gentle Giant is a band that I love quite a lot. It's a band that's not for everybody's taste. They do have some very tricky, complicated arrangement type of music. Um, and uh, they do have a lot of non-traditional instruments within their music. Well, when they still have, obviously, guitar, bass, keyboards, drums. They also have, like, xylophone. Uh, they have some brass instruments, like trumpets and stuff like that in there, too. They've had uh, uh, stringed sections where members of the band would jump onto a violin and one into a uh, cello for parts. It's rather interesting music, if you ask me. But uh, I'm going to go through the albums that I have. And because... I'm very picky about the pressings that I've gotten from this band because I really enjoy their music and I didn't just go and buy any willy-nilly uh, pressings of it. I bought ones that um, were good uh, pressings, good ones that I have know through the research I've done that are decent pressings. And uh, this is one of those bands where I'd rather have two variations of a record rather than 15 and have those two really good than to have one or two that are good and 14 that are garbage or 13 that are garbage. Okay, so let's start with the first record, which is the self-titled Gentle Giant record, which looks like this. Now, this one here is a UK pressing of the record. Now, this, in fact, is a misprint version of it. Um, there is... Um, it's listed wrong. The first and third song on side A are in the wrong spots, according to the track listing. Um, also of interest, I'm sure, is when you look at this, the normal way a record opens is this way, like this. But they've printed everything like this on it. So it's kind of lengthwise. And if you were to flip the album cover, this way, you can see it's actually a very big image. I'm not too much of a fan of this sort of a layout for a record. It's, I find it very, very odd, and it's very odd to put in with my rest of my albums. But whatever, the, the, the music is brilliant, so I'm not going to complain too much. Now, this is on the Vertigo label, the Vertigo Swirl, which is usually a very respected and well sought after pressing of a record. Now, I don't know if I misspoke there a second ago, if I said that... Why am I getting such a bad glare here? There you go. You know what, let me, let me just do one thing here real quick. Sorry, guys. What if I turn that off? Maybe the glare will not be as bad. Ooh, it's all dark now. Okay, um, how's that? That's better. Okay. So. That's going to be a bitch reading my notes. <laughs> Anyways. Um, so yeah. This is a... Um, it's, it's still a Canadian press, this, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, it's made in Canada and issued by London Records. I'll put up all the information as usual up here on the screen for you guys to, to uh, get more detail of it so I don't have to go and squirm through here looking at it all the time. I'll put up all the pertinent information up here, but from what I remember, I'll just speak of. So this is a Canadian pressing. It is a swirl. London Records did it uh, for them in Canada. And again, this is why I hate these covers because I'm trying to put the record back in here. And it's being a bitch to go back in. Okay, I'll just put it in like this. Okay, so that's the first pressing. Well, the first variation of the first record. Um, the next one that I have 
because of the same record. Yes, I still have the price tag on there because I'm afraid to take it off. I think I might rip it. Uh, but if you take a look at the price tag, it does say that it is a original press. Yes, 1972 original pressing. Now this is, again, one of those ones that open like this. But instead of going up and down with it, they actually printed the information properly as a, like in a gatefold, but the artwork is still like this. Now this is a Canadian pressing again. This was distributed by Polydor Records. And this has the Mercury labels. So in fact, this one here is an original. The other one I think is probably even a, a reissue, but it is on the more sought after Vertigo Swirl label, which is very interesting. So that's the first record. Next we get to a record that I enjoy very much, which is called Acquiring the Taste. and has a very provocative album cover. Now, if you turn it this way, you'll notice it's a peach. And if you were to go take this out here, if I open it up properly, you'll see it's just a tongue going for a peach. <laughs> now the one on the inside, there's the gatefold. Now this is a Canadian pressing and it is on, again, a Vertigo label, but this is called the Vertigo UFO label. And you'll see in a minute why they call it the Vertigo UFO. Because of those little UFOs in the top corner. Side A, side B. <clears throat> Again, I'll put up all the info on the screen. So that's the, uh, this is the 1971 release. 71, is that correct? Yeah, 71. So then most likely then that one that I showed you before, those are probably both reissues, I would say. Yeah, yeah, you know why? Because I think that the UK version of the first record came out in 70 and the first album didn't come out in Canada until 72. That's why it's an original Canadian from 1972. Uh, anyways, back to acquiring the taste. Here's my second version of it. This is the one that's on Mercury Records. And this one as well is done with Polydor. You'll see at the bottom, marketed with Polydor. The artwork and everything is exactly the same. The only difference, as you'll notice, of course, is on the top corners, there's the Mercury symbol instead of the Vertigo symbol. And this one, just like the other one that was on Mercury, is on the Skyline label. This is a really good record. It's very, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's, it's, it's quite experimental, and I'll read a little quote from it. It says, It is our goal to expand the front, sorry, it is our goal to expand the frontiers of contemporary music at the risk of being very unpopular. And that is exactly what this record did. It expanded the music, and it did make them unpopular in some circles because. Some people thought them a little too highbrow, I think. So, that is acquiring the taste. 
I love that record. You can find a copy of it, grab it. And here's another one, another record. This is the third record. This one is really hard to find. And I'll get into a little detail with this one. This is the third album called Three Friends. Now you'll say to yourself, well, wait a minute, isn't that the first record? Yes and no. Let me explain to you what I mean by that. Here's the inside. Now this is vastly different from the other one. Okay, now the story with this is that the version that came out in the UK has an image of three people on the front in a circle, the three friends. This US and Canadian pressing of it used the original UK cover from the first album. Um, I'm not sure why that is. I think it was because they didn't have access to the other image or something like that. I can't remember now offhand why they didn't use that image, but for some reason, I think maybe even the record label preferred this one over the other one. And it might have even been, what year was this to come out? This came out April 14th, 1972. Yeah, this came out probably around the same time as the first record got issued in Canada and the US. So maybe they had actually gotten this record out first. It's possible. I'm not 100% certain, but for some reason they like to use that cover in the US. This is uh, on Columbia Records. And this is the one and only pressing I have of this record. Like I said, I try to go for pressings that are really good, that sound good, that are known to sound excellent. This is a very well-respected pressing of this record. And to be honest with you, I've just never found another copy of this record anywhere, to be honest. Speaking of not finding a record anywhere, let's get on to the fourth one. And that is the record I've been hunting for high and low and finally have found it. And great tears of joy came when I found this record. And because it's never been issued until like 2011 maybe in North America, it was an impossibility to find this record. It's called In a Glass House. This came out only in the UK, and I'll tell you why. I wrote down this. Available in the US and Canada only as a high-priced import until 2004 when the remastered CD came out. The US label Columbia Records rejected the album as too uncommercial. The label subsequently dropped them, which contractually allowed the band to take ownership of the original master recordings and all of the rights to it. So this is one of the records that Gentle Giant have complete copyright to. Because once, they, once you're dropped contractually from a record label, the recordings revert back to you. So this came out on WWA Records in the UK. They had no problem issuing this record, and they shouldn't. Any label should have no problem releasing this. This is an absolutely fantastic record. I love this record. The moment I put it on, it was like listening to a masterpiece. Again, sorry, I'm gonna put up the information for you guys. It's a little dark now in here, isn't it? See what I can do about some light because I want to get to some light for this one. So give me one second here. Let's see if I can maybe put the overhead light on. Now this will either make it considerably worse or better. We'll see. <clears throat> so the next one that we're up to 
is a record that did quite well for them and a record that has been quoted by people like Stephen Wilson as probably one of their favorite Gentle Giant records of all time and that is The Power and the Glory. This is a great record. This is a really strong combination of progressive and just some well thought out more commercially friendly music. Now this here, if I'm not mistaken, is a Canadian pressing, uh, possibly, I wouldn't say a first, but yeah, it looks like it could be a first. It's a 1974 pressing. It came out September 20th, 1974, released on Capitol Records in the US and Canada. It's a concept record about an individual who means to do good using political power. He finds himself tempted to abuse power and ultimately becomes what he fought against. That is the lyrical concept of the record. I believe it's the first pressing and I'll show you why. This record comes out this way from the top. It is not a side loader, it is a top loader as they say. Here's the record, I'll take it out. This came on Capital Orange labels. If you're a Beatles collector, you'll know all about these different variations of the Capitol Records. There's a Capitol Purple, a Capitol Green, there's all kinds of different Capitol Record colors. This is the orange. And I think this light is doing a bit better. I'll just leave it. But that's the Canadian pressing. Again, you'll have the information up here. Capital, Mastered at Capital Records. And I have a second pressing of this record, which you will see right here. It even says right here that it is a reissue. <clears throat> the main difference is that there's text on the back and apparently someone's writing. Yeah, for some reason somebody put $4 on there. And the other main difference you'll notice is that this is a side, oops, a side version of it. Uh, and there's a label change on this one. We have green labels now. That was side two. This is a great record. I mean, all aside a proclamation, so sincere aspirations and playing the game probably one of the top five best first sides on a record you'll ever hear ever hear okay so that's power and the glory after they released <coughs> the power and the glory they were riding high and they released another record in july of 1975 which is their seventh record which is called Freehand, the first on their new UK label Chrysalis Records. They got a much better production due to their new record deal. And this is the highest charting album in the US and the only record to reach the top 50. <clears throat> that would of course be Freehand. Again, when things are ticking, Things sound great. And this record is fantastic. I mean, after Power and the Glory, you would think, could they top it? I don't know if I would say they topped it, but this is just as good. What a great record this is. And this was on the Capital Orange labels again. As you heard me mention earlier, they had a new record deal in the UK with Chrysalis, but they were still on Capitol in Canada in the United States. <clears throat> Great record. Uh, again, I'll put up the information. Uh, some of this information is very interesting about who 
you know, cut the lacquers and stuff like that. Hopefully that information, when, I, when it pops up, will show you some of those things. Um, <clears throat> here we get to the next record, which is the eighth record, released April 23rd, 1976. It is a concept record conceived as a radio interview. So you gentle giant fans probably know what record I'm already talking about. And this is my Canadian pressing of it. Now the Canadian pressing came out on May 4th. The initial release of this record was April 23rd in UK. And then in Canada, this came out in May 4th. And I'm talking about Interview. <clears throat> Still some really strong stuff on this. But I started to notice already the, the dents in the framework with this record. And it was on, again, <coughs> Capital Orange. I think I almost have a complete set of these. Capital Orange. Side A, side B. <coughs> and all of these are mastered at Capital Records. Uh, that famous round building that you see on postcards and stuff like that when you're in Los Angeles. That is where these records got mastered. <clears throat> okay, so that leads us now to... <clears throat> sorry, i got a little hoarse voice today. This is like my fourth video, I think. Um, next we get to the first live album from Gentle Giant, released January 18th, 1977, called Playing the Fool, the official Gentle Giant Live. Fantastic album. I mean, Gentle Giant is a band to see live. I mean, if if you go on YouTube, there's some really, really, really good video of them uh, on tour playing. <clears throat> and uh, some even complete shows there. I would highly suggest checking it out. You'd be highly impressed. It's a band that needs to be seen as well as heard. They play all kinds of great stuff on here. Proclamation, Funny Ways, which is a great version of it on here, Freehand, uh, they do So Sincere, and the big thing is they do excerpts from Octopus. Now, I don't have Octopus, that is a really good record, but it's also extremely hard to find on vinyl. I don't have it, um, I have it on CD, but I'm showing vinyl here today, so this is a double album, and it again is has come out on the capital orange label side A sorry side 1 side 2 and side 2 has like a <coughs> excuse me side 2 has a lengthy 15 minute long excerpt from octopus where they do uh, about four four or five songs in ed edited form live from that record. Here is side three. And this is side four. Great record. And uh, because Gentle Giant have always been that kind of band where they're known in the progressive circles but never were a band like a Genesis or something like that, you can find their records for relatively decent prices. I mean, there's an old sticker here that says it's five ninety nine. I mean, you could probably get this for 10 bucks now, somewhere. But uh, the first couple of records, not so much. They're up in the 30, 40, 50, even $100 for some of them. So, and those are the ones you want because they sound excellent. Now we're down to the last record <clears throat> that I own, which is, being, which is released on September 16th, 1977. Uh, this one has a change of stylings in it. The first side uh, has a bit of punk and pop music stylings in it, and side two is pure gentle giant progressive. So side one is sort of showing a change in writing, and that is the missing piece. Still a good record. Um, two weeks in Spain, the opener is okay. Bet you 
thought we couldn't do it is it's okay. This is where they kind of dabbled with the punk a bit and stuff like that. But Psy 2 is fantastic. As old as you're young, memories of old, winning for nobody. Those are all great songs. Sorry, I got a chill there. Um, <clears throat> great record. And this one doesn't have any of the orange labels. This was a custom label done by Capitol Records. A green one, it has both side one and two listed on it. And on the other side, you just have a puzzle piece center. So after this record came out, <coughs> there were two more records. One was called Giant for a Day. And the other one, which is the last one, was called Civilian. Pardon me. Um, Giant for a Day, I would say, is still probably worth getting. Um, it's a weaker record in comparison to these ones. And Civilian is really... what's How do I put this? Trying to be commercially friendly. Um, I think they knew that, that they were at the end of their rope writing-wise and just wrote a record of just standard music. Uh, very un... Gentle Giant, in my opinion. And uh, I've, I've seen it in a lot of places. Uh, beautiful near-mint versions for like $7, and I still haven't found the, the need or urge to buy it because I just don't think it's going to connect with me. I've heard some of it, and that further made me not want to grab it. So, But for, you know, listen, make your own opinions. Go on YouTube, check it out. If it... If it appeals to you, I have good news for you. There's pressings of it everywhere, good copies of it, and for a good price. But those are the ones that I have now, and uh, I love them all. They sound great. Like I said before, my advice to everybody who collects records, whether it's Gentle Giant or Genesis, collect what you like. But also, you know, don't be so concerned about collecting lots of variations save a few extra bucks and buy a really good copy, maybe a more expensive copy that you know is going to sound good and play good and won't be popping and cracking and has an inferior mastering job. You know, do a little bit of research. It's well worth it. All these earlier pressings that I have of some of these records, they sound fantastic now still, and I enjoy listening to them very much. So there you go. There's my Gentle Giant collection. I'm not sure what I'll do next. Maybe I might do some of my Genesis, maybe my Yes, maybe my Rush, who knows. Uh, Kiss, when I get along get along to it, will be a four-part at least, because I have so many records from them. I have 160 records. It'll probably have to be broken up about through maybe five parts. So I'll leave that one for another time. But this, is, this has been my Gentle Giant collection. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, until next time, this is Mark Anthony K saying bye for now.